When I first got into guns, most of the 1911s I owned were Colts. Colt as a brand is legendary. Debatably, the most well-known firearms manufacturer in the world. I still own multiple Colts today. This M45A1, however, is not mine, and it is from Colt's Custom Shop. And I must admit, it's a very good looking gun. And while most manufacturers would opt to call it tan or FDE or burnt bronze, Colt makes the creative choice to call it a quote, brown coating. Hmm. Now, allow me to be candid with you. I'm a demanding person, often inconsiderate. I curse like a sailor. I don't donate to whatever charity the cashiers ask me about. I'm uninterested in talking to you about your children, which means the rumors are true, kids. I am indeed the devil's child. And while I'm far from the smartest guy in the room, I'm not stupid either. You see, we pissed off many groups of fanboys on our channel. The CZ Scorpion owners, the SIG 320 owners, shotgun advocates, surefire light users. But even I know, never rile up the Colt 1911 fans. You just don't do that. So let's get right down to it. Is this a good gun? And the answer is, it depends. It's just not that simple, everyone. It depends because to define something as good or bad, you have to look at the relationship of price to value received. Is the value that I received from the thing worth the price that I spend in order to get it? I am a whiskey drinker, for those of you that do not know. And if I can use whiskey as an analogy here, this is E.H. Taylor, a desirable bottle. If you offered me E.H. Taylor, small batch, at its normal $40 MSRP, I'm likely going to ask you, how many bottles will you let me buy today, sir? If you want to charge me the $130 secondary markup price of the Taylor, mm, I'm probably going to say, thanks for the offer, I will go get a bottle of Michter's US1 bourbon. A debatably better bourbon that you can get at $50 all day long. Now, as a wild card, this is just to throw a little wrench in your day. This is from The Blendery down in Dallas, Texas, a bottle that I cracked last night. No affiliation to this video whatsoever, just a fantastic bottle of booze. This is the Double Jeopardy that I would highly recommend if you're in Dallas and you like the bourbon, check them out. So <clears throat> the truth is with the M45A1, there's some good things happening here. And then there are some things that are severely underwhelming. And so it creates this little bit of riff in the review, which is, is this worth the price paid in order to acquire it? So let's take a look. Okay guys, welcome. A uh, couple quick things to uh, keep the lights on. If you're looking for ways to support the channel, uh, merch is one of those ways. Uh, we do have uh, some woodland, we've got our classic red, we've got some muted out grays, different things that are on the site. We'll have that link below. You can go check that out, pick up a t-shirt if you see anything you like. Patreon helps a lot. It helps so that we don't have to come here and tell you that O lights are awesome. Guys, <laughs> that's, that's really the reality of it. It keeps us as shill free as we can possibly be. Um, and then last but not least, if you guys need real estate help, and if you don't know this fact, that's kind of the day-to-day uh, -day thing that primarily is what funds the 19 of this channel that you are watching right now is uh, selling uh, stupid real estate to you guys. So anyway, beyond that, thanks uh, US Brass House, Ammo. Uh, we've got two codes, they're linked below. Saves you some money on Ammo, check that out. Yep. Let's jump into it. So we're gonna go in a little bit different order today, and we're gonna talk first about a little bit of the history of the M45A1, because this is a tricky video, guys, okay? I'm gonna level with you up front. This is a tricky video, and there's gonna be some bumps and bruises and some, some praise along the way, but we have to start before we really understand what this is, we have to look back at the M45A1. So, history lesson, the M45A1, 
uh, sort of is slash was more technically the official pistol of Marine the Corps. Marine Corps, yeah. right? Special operations specifically. Because regular Marines really don't have pistols. No. Um, you know, there is some variance in that with officers, things like yeah. that. But really, MARSOC, Force Recon, that's who actually has pistols. Regular Marines do not have them. So in 2012, Colt was contracted to deliver 4,000 of ish these yeah. uh, to MARSOC Force Recon. 2014, they ordered another 12,000 units. So they picked up quite a few of these uh, bad boys. The contract guns come from the Colt Custom Shop, okay? And that's important to understand. This is neither of the, we're gonna get into what this is momentarily, okay? But again, sticking on the thing here, the contract pistol had several upgrades over the standard, uh, you know, sort of production 1911s that the military had been using. Some of those upgrades were an ambidextrous thumb safety, which you will not see on this model. We'll discuss nope. that. Um, tritium sights, a dual recoil spring that we will discuss a little bit, um, an accessory rail, aka light rail, Therefore, you see a light on the gun. A national match barrel uh, from Colt. And this fancy brown coating, which is actually how they describe it on their website, uh, which is lovely, I think. And the most creative way to talk about a coating I've ever heard. Um, You're joking. No. There's a word in front of it, but the actual words brown coating are on the Colt website for the M45A1. Okay? And that's it. Yeah, there's some word in front of it, like whatever, like Patriot Brown. Yeah, or something. some some shit, but it, no, not even that. It's just the type of coding that it is. Anyway, doesn't matter. So the gun still is still is not currently under contract. I do have it on good authority that uh, some of those guys still use these things. Um, huh. These are still used, and they still go on deployments, and they still are actually operational. Um, even cool. though it is not the current contract pistol. I do believe they moved to uh, Glock 19s. Um, but anyway, you can get some of the military surplus guns. They go for uh, stupid amounts of money because it's, it's, it's military shit and then it's just what it is. Okay. So what do we have here? So this was loaned to me by a buddy of mine. Okay. Good buddy. Yes. Good dude. Let us borrow his gun. It had basically no <coughs> rounds through it. And I was like, are you Sure, you're, you're willing to, uh, to to let us take this thing and, and beat it around a little bit. Not beat it around, that it sounds, you know. Not beat it off. No, I, I, apologize. I apologize to everyone at home. Um, Just throw some rounds through it, get her a little dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, so this is not the production model. They have a production model of the M45A1. You go on the Colt website, you will find it. This is not that. This is actually a proper custom shop gun. So this is coming from the Colt custom shop that has several features added per the original customer's request, okay? Um, so here's the evolution of where this came. And again, this is important to clarify this stuff as we get into the review. Original customer ordered the gun. Okay. From the Colt Custom Shop. Okay. Tracking. He got the gun. He sold it eventually to a gun shop down in Texas. Okay. Gun shop sold it to my buddy who in, in turn loaned it to us. Gotcha. Right? So it's changed hands about three different times now. The MSRP of the standard M45A1 production gun is $1,700. Okay? Oh. The price tag on this is currently unknown. We have not been able to track it down. We've been doing our best, have not been able to track it down. Our best estimate, looking at Colt's custom shop prices, 22 to 2300, okay? 22 to 2300. Now, my buddy paid 4650 for it. Okay, so there is a, much as we were discussing with the bourbon world, there is a tremendous secondary market for- What? For M45 and ones and Colt custom shop guns. He uh, paid $5,000 for this. Just sh with tax and everything, it was right at five grand, okay? So it leaves me in a tricky situation. How do I judge this gun? Do I judge it as the $22, $2,300 custom shop gun that it is in reality, or do I judge it as a $5,000 custom gun, even though that was a secondary price paid for it? So you, you see a little bit of dilemma here. And, and what I have decided is, look, the gun, $5,000 was spent on the gun. The gun actually costs closer to 2223 dollars And that is how I'm going to judge it. But there's one very, very important piece of information, custom shop. Yeah. Regardless of your price, a human being, not just machines, are involved in making this gun. And that's what we got to talk about as we take you on a little tour.
All right, guys, let's get into a little bit of a tour here. So what we've got is a five inch, therefore a government model. Um, for those of you not familiar with 1911s, five inches government model. Um, 1911 chambered in 45 ACP, right? God's round. Yep, two world wars, brother. <clears throat> This is also considered a Colt rail gun because it, um, pretty self-explanatory, has a rail. Has a rail. Um, and or as we them. call, in the 1911 world, a dust cover. If you're sophisticated, right? Um, so, let's go ahead and talk about this. Let's talk about some, some good news, because this is the, there's a mix of good and bad here. Um, how does it shoot? It shoots nice. Um, it's, a, it's a nice shooting gun. I, I, I really can't say anything there in terms of like, look, it has been perfectly reliable. Hasn't had a hiccup, um, and it, it shoots nice, okay? Like, there you go, right? Yeah. So I acknowledge that right out of the gates. Do I have it, had an issue with it shooting or anything? No, absolutely not. But, oh, and so there's this dual recoil spring that we're not gonna break this apart and show it because it's just unnecessary, but essentially it's two springs that fit inside of each other, and that is supposed to dampen some of that recoil. Okay. Does it work? In my opinion, I would say this is a, uh, Man, it's tough to say. I, I would not say it's like a real noticeable, like, oh man, that's an incredibly soft shooting 45. It's okay. Like, I, I'm kind of neutral on it. Just okay. I don't really have thoughts on it one way or another. Shoots like a 45 to me. Yeah, it's not really, uh, it's certainly not hurting anything. Is it helping? Maybe a little, like, you know, in like SIG 365 Spectre, Spectre Comp Land, where you're like, I mean, yeah, maybe a little, but like, let's not rely on that as our, like our pitch, you know? Like, so there you go. Now, Let's shift gears a little bit. <laughs> um, so it's going to be important that we have this as a reference point. So, guys, one of the things that makes 1911s great is that they are very accurate guns, and part of the accuracy on these comes from tight tolerances, okay? Specifically, the uh, fitment of the gun. Now, if this is a production gun, I'm well aware of the fact that a production gun is only going to have so tight of a fit, right? Because a human is not actually involved in fitting the frame to the slide. That's not the case for this. This is a custom shop gun, and I've asked multiple people who are in the know on Colt and this, and I mean, I really have done my best to do yeah. my homework and diligence on this. And everyone concurs and agrees, 100% a gunsmith from the Colt custom shop would have fit this gun. Okay, cool, let's talk about it. Let's drop mag. Uh-oh. <clears throat> so, I'm gonna do my best into the microphone. Uh, I don't know if you guys will be able to hear that. So this is the vertical play. I can hear it. This is the lateral play. Okay, let's see. I don't know if you guys can hear that at all on the mic at home or not. So, look guys, here's the reality. Also, let me see it. This motion. Can you hear that? There. It, it, it is an, it's a very loose gun, guys, and, and this is tricky, okay? Some of the Colt diehards, and perhaps Colt themselves, if this video ever finds them, could throw the argument at me of, well, look, this is modeled after the military gun. We purposely make those guns a little bit looser so that as they do get dirt, debris, and get a little bit crudded up, they're going to be more reliable. Cool. I understand the argument. Is that what they say about those guns? Th Look, there's a logical argument in favor of that, that a combat 1911, you would want a slightly looser fit so they don't foul up as bad. But if that's not verbally said in any of their marketing, I'm sorry. It is not said, and here's the other thing. Again, this is not a military gun. It is not your production gun. This is a hand Custom fit shop gun. 1911. Yeah. And the tolerances are horrible. Like, like, they just are, okay? So I'm going to show you a, an example of an alternative, okay? I tried to take my best alternative to that. This is an Alchemy custom weaponry <coughs> uh, Quantico. Five inch rail gun. This one happens to be a nine mil. Hand okay. fit. This is a hand fit gun, right? And hmm, funny. You, you don't hear a damn thing. There's zero movement in it. There, 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 there's absolutely no, no wiggle anywhere in that. It's a hand fit. It's a hand fit proper gun. Okay. Like there is a world of difference here, guys. Like an immense world of difference here in the fitment of these two guns, okay? And that's going to uh, break some hearts and there's gonna be some people that are very, very mad about that. The first thing I did when that gun, when the Colt came in, was I started pulling and just kind of, you know, shaking it and everything. And I was like, damn, 
that's a shitty fitment if that is a hand fit slide to frame, okay? I'm sorry, it's the reality, you can't really dispute it. But we are in a situation here where, in my mind, this is a lesser of two evils conversation. Either, either Colt is lying and they're not hand fitting these, which I know I will get chewed up for, okay? Which will be a horrible thing, horrible thing. They're lying to us all and they're not hand fitting this stuff. Or you're just not very good at it. Neither of those is great. Nope. Neither of those is great. So you're just really lazy about it or you're just not doing it at all. Like, I don't know. Neither of these is a good scenario, okay? The trend continues. So let's talk about the bushing and the barrel. Okay, so this is a national match <clears throat> barrel from Colt uh, in this gun. Considered a, a good barrel, right? Part of where 1911s get their accuracy from is in the bushing, right? Because when, when this reciprocates, right? Or not, forget about the reciprocation thing. That bushing is what mates up that barrel with the slide, which is what keeps the accuracy, mm -hmm. right? So again, this would have been hand fit, okay? Cool. This should not happen. Let me depress the bushing and just completely, I'm not gonna do it like, I mean, do you guys see what's happening there? The bushing's completely rotated just at the, that should not happen. I mean, isn't this that- This is not fit. Isn't that why they have bushing tools to help you when it's properly fit? Correct. Undo the bushing, correct? So let's take our, our, our alternative, right? Depress the little plunger. Oh, you ain't getting that bitch off. She ain't going nowhere. I mean, I can't budge it. Yeah. I know, I cleaned this last night. Like, you've got to wrench this bad boy off, which is how you get that crazy accuracy, right? So like, look, guys, the, the, the bushing is, is, is horribly uh, fit on that. The last time I saw that, on a 1911 was from Triarch. And I would not spend money on one of those. I would not spend money on one of those, okay? So like, <laughs> so now we have slide to frame fit, extremely sloppy. We have the bushing to barrel fit, extremely sloppy. Well, that's where all the, that's where the pride and joy of 1911s is. Yeah. So if this is a custom shop gun fit by a human being, we got problems here. Yeah. Like, like we have problems here, okay? Let's talk about this because this is now, not debatable, okay? What I'm gonna say right now is not debatable. Let's talk about one of the custom features added to this, which is the mag well, okay? So, I don't know why I keep, as if a bullet just jumped in in the last two minutes, but nah, it's we're just, just obsessive uh, Habit. shit, you know? Um, so look guys, this mag well was added on after the fact um, by the Colt Custom Shop, okay? What you will notice, you see these grips and uh -huh. this gap down here? Okay, by comparison, this- Ain't no gap in those grips. Do you see how the grips are actually cut to fit the magwell? Mm -hmm. So that there's no visible gap down there? Cool, that's how a magwell in 1911 grips should fit. Let's also look at the following. It's gonna be very tough to see on camera. Hold this and look through that. You will see just daylight coming through the bottom oh, of the Oh yeah, right here. It's not fit to the frame. Oh wow. There's just a gap at the bottom of the magwell in the frame. If we had a piece of paper, you could slide it in yeah, between Yeah, you would be able to slide it in there. Uh, actually, let me see that piece of paper. That's like four sheets of paper, but yeah. Yeah, take one of those. We're just doing a little bro science here, everyone. Not good, okay. man. Like that's, that's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. And, and okay, cool, so let's explore. Yeah, good. Yeah, not not gonna happen. Um, no, nope. because it's fit. Like it, it, it's that simple. These are two hand fit 1911s. There's a world of difference here. Supposedly. Yeah. So, um, see that bad boy. Um, so, da, 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 da. so, look. Here's the deal. Colt could again, if they were defending themselves on this, see this and be like, well, look, the customer sent it to us. He didn't want us to swap the grips or or anything, which is why it looks like that. Cool. My, my caveat to you would be like, have some pride and be like, if we're gonna add a mag Go the well, extra mile. Then like fit everything properly. <clears throat> I think this mag was just slapped on. I, I don't think anything was, was fit uh, on this. Well, and that's why, I don't know if you noticed, but if you dry fire this, mm -hmm. you can feel movement through this whole thing. I haven't really noticed that. I mean, I take your word for it. Pay but, attention. Yeah, yeah, just dry fire it over there. Pay attention to how your palm feels. Oh yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, um, I do. So let's talk about, again, it's attention to detail. And look, I get it. This Colt is a, you know, $22, $2,300 gun, custom shop, so I don't give you a pass on that. Um, and this is like a $4,000 gun. Okay, take a look at interest, something interesting that I just noticed. 
These are both grip screws that actually take a flathead screwdriver. What's the difference between the Alchemy? They are completely vertical on both sides. They are aligned. This one, they're every different direction. I mean, like, I, I, I'm so spoiled from, from dealing with, like, really awesome guns like this, but I look at this and I'm like, did no one think this looked like shit, that all these grip screws just face random different directions? All of them. All of them. Just pointing, like, wherever the fuck they landed. That's, that's where they go. Do you now, know how mad the Colt fans are right now watching this? People have broken their TVs, phones <laughs> watching this. Called the cops on us. People are upset. <clears throat> but also, going the extra mile for a gun that's going through said cus or manufacturer's custom shop, again, attention to detail, go the extra mile. Yeah. Hand fit the mag well, vertically align the screws. It doesn't take that much time, but the overall presentation looks way better. Yeah, um, model that for a sec. Um, so there's checkering on the... Um, Mainspring housing and, and front strap, and uh, that was actually that actually would be a custom shop uh, upgrade. It's it's nicely done. I have no beef with that. No, um, it, it's perfectly fine. No perfectly aggressive, there. guys. We will always point out what is good, point out what is bad. There's always. there's never an agenda with this stuff. Like it, it's this is what what our channel is is what happens when you have a channel that says, yeah, we're just going to do honest reviews. Like this is what you get. You get good and bad. Okay. Yep. Um, the checkering is perfectly fine. Here's what does kind of blow my mind a little bit though, is that the production one at $1,700 is totally smooth. No checkering on it, which man, at $1,700, that's unexcusable. Now, the caveat would be, well, the military one, this is the clone of the military gun, and theirs doesn't have checkering. Cool, my caveat to that, caveats on top of caveats. I am Johnny Depp's lawyer right now, just litigating this case, right? And my caveat would be, what military weapon just has a smooth grip? Like, guys are running gloves and shit? Like, who thought that was a good idea? Like, that's well, insane. Well, didn't want to go the extra mile. It, it, that, that's just crazy to me, okay? If it's a combat gun, like, I Throw need some checking, texture. Dude. Like, yeah. please. Which brings me to an, another point. So, this has um, Novak uh, three-dot tritium sights. Um, the tritium's fine. I, I actually still am someone who likes tritium. I have no beef with tritium. Um, Here's my caveat. Mm-hmm. On a combat gun, if I need to rack this one-handed off of a belt, some bad dude's face, yeah. Novak sights ain't fucking doing it. No, 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 they're, they're, they're not. And, and that's my issue with them. It's like, cool, I get it. They were kind of like old school and legacy and popular and shit. But it's like, look, I need a ledge on the, on the rear sight. Ledge. And again, if this is a military gun, right, which it was, is, this is based on, it's Supposedly. like... Supposedly. How did your military gun just have this, like, ramp of a no rear back. sight where you can't do anything? Like, that's just... One-handed manipulation's got a blow. Yeah, I, I, I mean, like, I don't know. No bueno to me. Uh, so the safety on this, the M45A1 A comes with uh, Colt's ambidextrous safety. Very strange choice by the original customer on this, which was to remove it and put on a single side, which I don't understand that choice at all. No side here. Whatever makes you happy. That's that's not an issue with Colt. That's side there. the original customer who was a weirdo, I guess. Uh, but they did put on the Wilson Combat um, bulletproof safety, which is a great safety, and the safety is very tactile. Good, positive, no issue with it. Safety's perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, but it should be ambidextrous. The coating, so originally, as kind of joked about earlier with the brown coating thing, so the mil military originally, uh, the original coating that was on these did not perform well. Um, it just got beat to shit and it did not perform well. So Colt redid the coating in this. So what it is technically called is a deco bond brown coating, right? So the word deco bond is in there, but I'm still giving them shit, no pun intended, for calling it brown. Just a brown coating, a brown coating. Like, I don't, I mean, maybe something else other than brown. Like, there's a lot of other options to call this. We couldn't have found a different word. Yeah, the um, serrations in the rail, um, believe it or not, and I'm not one to typically say this, these serrations are a little too aggressive. Um, they, they're just a little too bitey. They bow out from the slide ever so slightly where holster fit, your, your problem you're gonna have in terms of holsters is how beefy the rail is. I should have brought the uh, screwdriver to so take it off and you can see it. We'll find a photo. It's pretty beefy. But like, this is a real beefy, like actual um, Picatinny rail. It, it is gonna make your life, I mean, on, on Kydex, it is gonna be a little bit of a, of a tricky one there. I'm sure there's manufacturers that make holsters. This gun was uh, here for about three weeks with me. There's no sense in getting a holster, me spending a hundred bucks on a holster for yeah. it. At the end of the day, I don't need that bill. You know what I'm saying? So, um, 
Trigger is, uh, I don't know, I don't have a trigger pull gauge, um, but by all accounts, about four and a half, five pounds. Trigger's fine. Uh, it's nothing, my, it's gonna be 100% better than every striker fire trigger you ever shoot. By 1911 standards, it's fine. Like, it's, it's fine, but that's what it is. It's not notably good, it's, it's certainly not bad, it's just, yeah, it's, you know, it's solid 1911 trigger. And I would expect nothing less from, from Colt. But like, look guys, there's some good, there's some bad. Let's take you to some final thoughts. This has been a weird, tough review to do. If you told me this was a $1,700 to $2,000 production gun, I'd give it a pass. And while the MSRP might be closer to $2,200, not much over my $2,000 threshold, it is a custom shop gun. A Colt gunsmith allegedly hand fit all of this. Therefore, I cannot sign off on it. The question is, are you paying for quality? Are you paying for name and history? Ultimately, it's another case of a company riding on what they've done in the past. But there's an expression that asks, what have you done for me lately? And this gun ain't it. In fact, it makes me a little bit sad. If you have to have an M45 A1 because you collect military clone guns, then go for it. But don't fool yourself on what you're buying. You're buying history and legacy, which is very different than a custom 1911.